Hello, this presentation is a continuation of a previous presentation in which we established a kinematic control for robot manipulators with policies lying in the null space of the task. The objective of the presentation is, on the one hand, to define a policy in the null space that does not affect the main task, and specifically, we will define a policy that is based on the idea of artificial potential fields. This method defines an attractive potential function and a repulsive potential function. The attractive function will allow us to tend towards a certain configuration and the repulsive function will prevent us to approach to some configurations. We will see these ideas through a series of examples. As we saw in the previous video, the kinematic controller combines a task to follow its trajectory with a secondary task which resides in the null space of the main task, and therefore, whatever we do in the secondary task, it should not affect to the main task. The proposal is to use a potential function that allows the robot to tend towards a given configuration while avoiding other configurations that represent the obstacles. The potential function is generally a combination of an attractive potential function with a repulsive potential function. The attractive potential function, as we saw in the previous video, could be a quadratic function, or a conic function, or even a combination of both. Usually, obstacles are defined in the workspace, since this is the space in which the robot works, which is usually a subspace of dimension 2 or 3, depending on the problem. However, as already we have already defined it in the previous video, the configuration space, space represents the subspace with all configurations that the robot can reach. For a given configuration Q, the robot will occupy a region AQ of the workspace, and that will obviously depend on the robot's geometry. On the other hand, a new concept that we haven't seen so far is the configuration space for obstacles, or C-Ops. This is the region in which the configuration space uh, the robot intersects with the obstacles. In the animated figure, we see the configuration space of an obstacle for a robot with three degrees of freedom. The obstacle is actually a square region, but given the robot's geometry, it has generated the volume that you can see in the animation. The repulsive potential function it is designed so that the robot moves away from certain regions of the configuration space where the obstacles are. A common practice is to define a distance metric, for example, norm 2, between the robot and the obstacle, so that the closest point of the obstacle is the one considered to determine the direction of the gradient of the potential function. There are many ways to implement the basic idea of a repulsive potential function, but generally, they are all based on computing the distance to an object. How to determine this point be is beyond uh, the scope of this presentation. I will simply comment that there are techniques uh, within the computer graphics that will allow us to uh, compute that point using ray tracing techniques. Here, we show a potential function that is based on the inverse distance, so that if the distance is less than a certain uh, region of influence threshold, the repulsive function is inversely proportional to the distance scaled by a, a parameter epsilon r that regulates the magnitude of the gradient. Here we see the case in which the robot must follow a path as indicated by the black line in the figure on the left. Also, the robot must tend to a certain configuration as specified in the figure below. At the same time, the robot must try to avoid the blue square obstacle. In this example actually is based on uh, exa the example we saw in the previous video, and therefore I assume that you understand the problem statement. The attractive configuration that we have indicated here is probably not the most suitable one to solve this problem. Still, the kinematic controller has been able to find a solution that fulfills the task while avoiding the obstacle. The adjustment of the parameters has been as indicated here to achieve the results shown. On the other hand, 
here we see an example in which the robot has managed to accomplish the task, but this, in this case, the solution uh, that has provided is very close to correlating with the obstacle. The interest of showing this um, simulation is precisely to understand that in this case the priority is always given to the fulfillment of the main task, which is to follow the trajectory. And the avoidance of obstacle has a secondary priority in this approach. Therefore, it could happen that the solution found is not capable of avoiding obstacles while fulfilling the main task. And we have to properly adjust the uh, parameters uh, of the potential function to prevent this from happening. Here we see a third example where the robot uses a different uh, attractive configuration to solve the same problem. Again, the robot has been able to properly accomplish the task while avoiding the obstacles. We can see that again the solution is reasonably similar to, uh, to the previous ones because the attractive potential function is not very influential compared to the repulsive potential. Otherwise, the obstacle might not be avoided. And finally here I show the fourth example in which the main task is again accomplished while avoiding the obstacle. You can see that in all shown examples the end effector trajectory was the same, but joint trajectories were slightly different. In this presentation I have explained an extension of the kinematic control of robot manipulators with policies uh, lying in the neural space. Thanks a lot.